Well, really excited to welcome in uh, Eagles defensive line coach and run game coordinator, Matt Burke. Matt, uh, thanks for joining us here to talk uh, some Javon Hargrave. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. So let's talk about Javon. I think for fans, you know, we've heard a lot uh, about what he can bring to the table. I'm interested to get uh, from you just kind of your scouting report. What does he bring to the field? What is it that he's going to bring to this Eagles defense here this fall? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, when we went through the process for free agency uh, with uh, Javon, one of the things we really noticed, you know, obviously playing a little bit in a, in a read type scheme and, and some of those things, uh, still the ability for him to get off and, and, you know, what we look for in our D line in terms of an attack front and, and guys that can disrupt and, and get penetration. Um, you know, he had, he had a lot of TFLs and pressures and sacks for a guy that wasn't being asked to play that way. And, and for us to project him translating sort of into our style of defense, we thought there was a lot of upside, uh, obviously a kid that's kind of hitting his prime. Um, you know, he was a guy that a lot of us liked coming out uh, in the draft, you know, four years ago. So kind of, continued that thread along and followed the career and just I uh, really think he's a great fit I think he's a he's a disruptive player um, he plays a lot of juice and a lot of energy and I think uh, you know our plan is to have him in our schemes going to just even uh, you know enhance his skill set even more so talk about that when you say he played in a read scheme with the Steelers I what what exactly does that mean if you could just break it down for uh, for our fans yeah I mean in general very very that very broken down uh you know the way we play our front um you know when, when our d-line uh ball snap we're asking them to penetrate and get up the field and just cause disruption in the backfield and 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 be sort of an aggressive and attacking front uh there's other styles of defense uh that ask their d-line to stay more at the line of scrimmage occupy blocks um so you hear like a read scheme like they're reading the play instead of just we like to go attack and get disruption and get up the field. Um, other schemes and, and one that he played in some of the time um, where they just ask those guys really to not get up the field and stay at the line of scrimmage and sort of play blocks and just sort of hold space. Um, you know, so sometimes it's a hard translation trying to see, hey, can a guy play? Some guys are sort of more fit for those schemes or more fit for our schemes. So, um you know, you're always when you're evaluating those players, you're, you know, and they're not playing in a scheme that sort of is a direct fit for what we're doing. Um, you know, you're just trying to translate and project how that fits. And, and we felt really good about him coming. You know, we think there's more upside for him. We think he fits sort of our style of play a little bit more possibly. Yeah, and that's what was so interesting to see about him going to Pittsburgh was that, you know, I remember watching him uh, at the East-West Shrine Bowl. He was so dominant down there in practices in St. Petersburg. He was unblockable in one-on-ones. You could see that ability to be disruptive. Senior Bowl the next week, he was more the same, and he was really unblockable in practice. But uh, I was anxious to see what he would look like in Pittsburgh in that scheme, and they did a great job kind of bringing him along. The next question I had for you was, one of the things that has always stood out to me watching him with the Steelers, he's so good in stunts and twists and all the different games that they run with him up front. What does it take for a guy to be so effective running those kinds of schemes up front? Well, I mean, obviously from an athletic standpoint, you know, for a bigger man to be able to move into those things and move his feet that way um, and still have the power to get penetration. A lot of times when you're you know, running stunts, sometimes you can get too lateral, get washed sideways because you don't have the power to kind of, get back up north, south and penetrate. So, um, you know, he's got that ability to obviously he's got some good quickness. The stuff you were talking about when you, you know, you noticed coming out of college, um, he's got the, that foot athlete ability for a big man, um, but he's still a powerful, I mean, he's a really powerful kid. So when he does kind of penetrate and get back up north, south, he can really push the pocket still and, and bang into guys. And, and like I said, you know, they do some of that, obviously when they get to some third down, um, he was kind of cut loose a little bit more and, um, he plays with really good leverage, so that that helps. He gets underneath pads of offensive linemen a lot to be able to kind of work underneath them, and just he's he's constantly knocking guys back. Like he was just constantly going forward. Like you said, whether he's stunting, whether he's just in a in a one gap scheme. Obviously, when they ask him to do his read technique and to anchor down, I mean, he's got some natural ballast to do that. Um, but he's con when he's going forward. I just we noticed he was always constantly just like walking linemen back, knocking guys back, getting pressure. So. Um, we just think if we ask him to do that every time, every down and in, in, uh, in our scheme, I think that's going to be a good fit for us. We're excited to have him. Really excited. 
So I want to ask you a question just about defensive linemen in general, particularly young defensive linemen, whether they're off the edge or interior guys. Uh, you know, I remember him coming out. He had a his swim move was awesome, and he had the ability to kind of win with that. That was kind of his go-to trick in his bag. When you look at defensive linemen coming out, is it better for a guy to have one go-to move that was really, really effective for them, or maybe multiple moves that weren't as effective, but they had a lot of different tricks in their toolbox? Yeah, I think it's hard. I mean, I think you can get, you know, the whole like jack of all trades, master of none. I mean, I think a lot of you, you'll see a lot of good rushers have one go to move because a lot of times that sets up the other moves or your counters to that. You know what I mean? If you don't have a move that you know you can win with every time and you're just throwing a bunch of stuff out there, sometimes it just gets kind of mushy and, and isn't as effective. I find that, you know, guys that, hey, I have a go to move that, I know the offensive lineman has to respect because I can win with this. I've proven it. I, you know, I've go, I've mastered it, whatever it may be. And so um, I, I find that guys that have sort of, you know, one or two pitches that are their go-tos that sets up their counters. Now they don't have to use their counters as much or when they do their counters are more effective because the threat of that, man, this guy can beat me with his swim move or, you know, whatever the, whatever the move is an inside stab move or something that's going to set up all their other counter moves as opposed to just sort of keep throwing different moves out there and, and hoping, you know, that one of them works or not being quite as good at all. It's hard to master a lot of them. I mean, I think you find more, more, more effective rushers will have one or two pitches that, that they consistently go to. And then the changeups are just that changeups that just keep offensive linemen honest enough or keep them off balance enough when they're, you know, when they're just setting on that one move and just setting on that one move when all of a sudden, you throw the counter, it keeps them honest, and then it keeps your sort of one or two pitches still clean. So um, it's hard for a guy. I mean, it's, it's hard to rush the passer, man. So, you know, I think <laughs> trying to do too much sometimes can get can get a little bit much. So um, we really try to emphasize, like, hey, ha- have a have a pitch, throw your fastball, you know, have one or two moves, and then you can set your counters up off of that. So that's kind of more what we look for. I wanted to ask you too, um, you know, we've talked a lot on this podcast about uh, positionless players, right? And guys that can line Mm -hmm. up and play a different, a number of different roles, uh, whether it's in the secondary, up in the front seven on offense uh, with receivers and backs and tight ends. What does a positionless guy look like along the defensive line? And what does that mean for a coach like yourself to have a guy that can do that? Uh, Yeah, it's probably, I would say probably the the closer you get to the ball, the the less that applies. Although for us, Mm -hmm. Um, again, a lot of it comes down to being able to rush. So, um, you know, if you have a guy like Fletch who can really rush wherever he wants, um, you know, you can set things up. BG being able to rush inside a little bit. Um, you know, even a guy like Malik that can rush inside and outside a little bit, those sort of things. That To me, that's where it comes into play in terms of our rush package. Guys that can rush from different spots and have some sort of inside, outside. Because now, again, it's sort of like we were just talking about you know, you're prepping for an opponent and you're, you know, you can throw different looks at an offensive lineman. So a guard is, you know, blocking Fletch and blocking Fletch and all of a sudden BG's in there. That's a totally different type of rush, a different type of block. And you can kind of play those matchup games a little bit and move guys around. Um, you know, that's probably where it comes into play a little bit more. So guys that can either, you know, there's some guys you see that are sort of, um, you know, I don't say base ends or can like bigger guys that can play defensive end in terms of run situation for a second down, they can move inside and rush. There's some ends that can rush inside and you can get matchups on guards. There's some, I mean, rare tackles like Fletch and Malik, the guys that, that are athletic enough that can rush on the edge too. So um, the first tool we look for there is really like that sort of thing is can we move guys around in our rush package to create different matchups, rush different guys, just give different, again, different pitches. So now you know, we don't need Fletch running, you know, having six different rushes on a guard. Fletch can have a couple different rushes. Then we can put BG in there. Then we can move Malik over to that side, you know, or or Hargrave or whoever. So, um, you know, the versatility, I think, comes from that, being able to play some different spots along the line. That's what we'll look for with those guys. And I guess, too, it's the the mental side of it, too, for those guys, right? Because they have to have different uh, plans of attack against a guard or a center as opposed to uh, an offensive tackle where they might have a little bit more space. Sure, sure, absolutely. So again, it's, it's partly athletic. It's partly like, yeah, the mental approach to it. But again, that the offensive lines get the same issue. You know what I mean? So now, like, hey, I'm I'm an offensive tackle. Like, I'm going to block Derek Barnett differently than I'm going to block 
all of a sudden flesh lines up on the edge on me or whoever that may be. So it kind of goes both ways. And again, you don't want to, you don't want to put your guys in a spot where it's too much or they're not being effective. It's the whole point is, is week to week. You look at it and say, okay, you know, where, where is our most effective rushers or who can we isolate or how can we get this matchup? And, um, but the guys that give you that ability to move them around the line to, to do that, you know, there's some, some guys that, that can't rush from one side or like literally some guys can only be a left end or only a right end. They just, their stances are weird. They don't rush as good from one side or another. So um, sometimes that kind of limits you a little bit and say, okay, well, he has to be, over here and you can't really do as much with him, but the guys that you can kind of bounce around the line and, and have them line up in different spots, give you some flexibility there. And lastly, coach, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about Hassan Ridgeway. You know, Javon Hargrave uh, was the first big acquisition for the Eagles this off season. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first re-signing was Ridgeway. And I'd like to just ask you, uh, what did you see from Ridgeway his first year in Eagles green? What's the scouting report that you can give fans? They saw a little bit limited exposure. You've obviously seen a lot more of Hassan. Yeah, I, 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 unfortunately, not not too much more, um, you yeah. know, from from him getting injured last year. Um, you know, it, it was funny even going back through the cut up. Sometimes you get lost. I mean, he got hurt early in the year, so the second half of the year, you know, things kind of get out of your head. You're you're obviously in the in the day to day. Going back to these cut ups this off season, you know, he, his flashes were really good. He's a powerful man. He's a he's a bigger body than some of the guys we've we've had in there. Um, really powerful when he get again. He was a guy coming to the system, like talked about with Hargrave a little bit, um, you know, last year's first year here, um, you know, hadn't totally played a, a full attack style like we had. So there was a little bit of a transition for him. So, um, you know, for us feeling like, okay, a second year sort of in the scheme with him, he was, again, there were, there were flashes on film last year, him really doing some good things and really penetrating and knocking guys off. He's a bigger guy. So if, if you can get a guy of his size, that can generate that force that can play the attacks that we want to play. Um, you know, that's obviously a huge plus for us. So we, we saw a lot of progress. We saw a lot of flashes going back, watching the cutups after the season. Um, he kind of kept popping up going, man, Rich did some really good things. And, and hopefully there's a, another year of growth and another year of comfort playing the scheme and playing the system. We think there's uh, there's some good upside for Ridge there. So we, we're excited to get him back too. There's another, another good uh, player in the fold for us. Well, Coach, thanks so much for joining us again. uh, Stay safe, and we'll talk to you again soon, hopefully. I appreciate it.